Hey everyone, my name is Rayma, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a quick weekday lunch of Dan Dan noodles. And we'll be veganizing it today. Typically, Dan Dan noodles are made with pork, and I'm going to be showing you how I make it vegan. All right, everyone, so I've prepared the mise en place for Dan Dan noodles, which today I will be veganizing. And I've gone ahead and I have put together the sauce for the noodles and so I'll just quickly take you through the list of ingredients and I'll show you the bottles in case they're not familiar to you you can go to your Asian market in the US or Chinatown and try to find an equivalent so the first thing that goes into the sauce is um, Chinese style light soy sauce this is different from dark soy sauce and you should try to use Chinese style soy sauce for this recipe it has a different taste in Japanese, Thai, or Vietnamese soy sauces. And then next we have um, a Chinese Shaoxing cooking wine. Um, it's kind of like you know using a white wine in Western applications. It gives it that kind of um, kick and dimension to your food. Then we have black vinegar, Chinese black vinegar, um, a little bit of sesame, Chinese sesame paste. If you don't have this and you had a hard time finding it, which we did when we lived in the United States before moving to Asia, you can always replace this with tahini. That works okay as well. And then next, um, we have an ingredient that's kind of newish to me. And this is fermented broad beans with chili. And the package is in Chinese, and I don't read Chinese, so I don't know the name of it in Chinese. But I'll try to find a, an equivalent so that you can point to it at, in the Chinese market and someone can help you find it in the US. And then finally we have, um, last but not least, um, Chili Crisp in the brand that most everyone has and knows. This jar is almost finished and we have to get another one soon. Um, Alright, and then I'm going to chop two cloves of garlic as well. And for garnish I have cilantro and green onions. If you are a cilantro hater like I used to be, I'd highly, highly recommend that you force yourself to eat it. It'll take you about 15 times and it'll taste like soap, it'll be bitter, you'll hate it, and then 15 times in, it'll become lemony and floral and you will not regret it and it'll make your Asian cooking so much tastier and so much better. So give it a go. And then, um, I think that in Sichuan, when, when my sister and I went, the noodles were typically fresh, and we don't have that today because this is a quick lunch, and I have to teach five hours online. We're still very much locked down in the Asia Pacific um, right after this, so I don't have time to make handful noodles or fresh noodles, so we're using two bundles, one per person, of Japanese-style uh, dried ramen noodles, and that is perfectly acceptable for a weekday lunch. Um, if you have spaghetti at home, you could use dried spaghetti, which you pre-cook. You could use instant ramen noodle packets as well. Um, any kind of noodle is fine for this dish. Um, and then the meat replacement today that we're going to be using is called Ami Pork, or Ami Meat, as, as it is rebranded in Singapore. Um, and this is an Asian meat replacement that comes in a mince form in the frozen section that was invented and created in Hong Kong. And I found that the mince omni meat is by far the best application of, or the best product for making Asian style um, recipes. And that some of the Western meat replacements like Beyond or Impossible, they don't quite taste right in Asian applications. They have kind of a Western taste to them. So we'll be using this today and I'll show you how. So pro tip, um, I used to throw away these cilantro roots for years and I had no idea that you could actually use them and they were a key ingredient in amazing Thai curry bases. So if you are interested in reducing your food waste, you can actually save these and make an amazing Thai curry uh, base green curry with these, with these roots. Whoever knew that people eat these, but they do. All right, Bart is gonna start making the dandan dan noodle sauce, and Bart is very shy, so he may be talking, and I don't, I won't be showing his face. 
Bart is also adding, um, what is this? It's a little bit of pickle, Chinese uh, pickled radish. All right, so that's a little bit of Chinese pickled radish and it comes in a bag typically, so we just keep it in a little container in our fridge. It's kind of like a condiment staple. And this is not in the recipe, but we added it to give it extra flavor and dimension. All right, so the garlic and the pickled radish are in a little bit of neutral oil and we are just stir frying that before adding the sauce. All right, so that is the Omni pork, um, which I showed you earlier. You can see it's kind of like a mince texture and it firms up once it hits heat. So that's gonna go in now that the radish and the garlic have been going for a bit. So this is what the ame pork looks like after a couple of, maybe about a minute or so. You can see it's kind of becoming, um, like, it's breaking up into little chunks of meat, which is what we want. And Bart had not thought about the pickled radish. He says that there are different kinds from different regions, and that there's one unique to Sichuan province, um, which would be more appropriate for Dan Dan noodles, which is the Sichuan dish. But we have a hard time sourcing that here in Singapore. So this is the one that comes from the Red Bull store. Is that right? Where do we get this pickled radish? Uh, we got this from Shenxiang. The other one isn't actually that hard to find. I just didn't have it on hand. Oh, okay. It's not hard to find. We just didn't have it. And this is just the regular one that we got from Shenxiang, which is a grocery store that has many ingredients that are Chinese ingredients. So Bart said that actually, it's called Sichuan vegetable sometimes in English, but it's not unique to Sichuan province apparently, according to him. Um, and that it is actually just called Sichuan vegetable by English speakers, but you can get it in other provinces as well. Alright, so now the water is boiling, and we're going to put the dried Japanese style ramen noodles in. Um, again, if you don't have this, you can also use any kind of noodle that you have. Um, Verica Pintessa has an Asian style Americanized noodle dish that I, that was kind of my first introduction to Dan Dan Noodles Light. Oh, what is that? Um, <laughs> whatever that was. And um, she uses spaghetti in her Asian noodle dish, Asian American noodle dish. And it's kind of like a peanut dish um, that is, I think in some ways, pays homage to Dan Dan Noodles, but minus the spice for an American palate much more oil, much more sugar, and she uses spaghetti, and I really, I have done that before, and it tastes quite good. So you can do that if you don't have um, ramen noodles. Yeah. Alright, so the only pork is getting more and more minced, which is what we want. The noodles are boiling away, and normally um, in traditional yanda noodles, um, you can just put the sauce in directly, but um, we're going to heat it through because I put the shasun wine in there and also because I think that um, Ami pork doesn't have the flavor that real pork does and so it's good to kind of give it some flavor from the sauce and heat the sauce through. So we're doing that now. Alright, so we added a little bit of uh, noodle cooking water just like you would for Italian cooking because the Ami pork sucked up all the sauce. Um, and the noodles are just about done. So we're going to drain them and then we'll show you how to assemble. Alright, so we're about to assemble it. We have the noodles in the bowl, and normally the sauce would go on the bottom, but we've combined it with the mince, so it goes on the top, kind of like a spaghetti bolognese. Alright, so we have the green onions. You can chop them smaller if you want, and the cilantro. There's one completed dan dan noodle dish, and then we'll do the other one. This is what it looks like. Alright, so this is the completed and assembled dan dan noodles, and Typically, you then mix it up at your own table, and I'm doing that with one hand. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. If you are a fan, as I am, of American-style spaghetti bolognese, which my grandmother used to cook all the time, I think you'll really like this dish because it kind of has that same 
pasta and ground meat vibe in a rich tasty sauce and packed with flavor um, so give it a try and I hope you try our veganized dandan dan noodle dish all right everyone so that's how I veganized dandan dan noodles dandan dan noodles come from China and they are particular to the Sichuan province and uh, my sister and I had a chance to travel to Sichuan um, to Chengdu a couple years ago and we ate amazing noodle dishes that were spicy, they were mala, they had that tingling Sichuan peppercorn flavor that kind of numbs your tongue and your mouth. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get to eat dandan dan noodles per se because they all had meat in it. Um, but my travels to Sichuan um, allowed me to kind of recreate the taste with Omni pork. Um, so if you're curious about trying Sichuanese food, and you like spicy food, and you're vegan, um, I hope that you might try this recipe. Thanks. Oh, are you scolding me? You want dandan noodles too? No, I don't think so. You don't want dandan noodles.